Welcome to Experiments in Leadership. I am Sonu Bhaseen. Experiments in Leadership is a space where industry leaders share their thoughts and stories and anecdotes about various facets of leadership. As always, before anything else, I do want to urge all of you to subscribe to my channel. It has great conversations with some really interesting people and it is free to you. So today I have a guest who could pass off as a college student, but I warn you not to be taken in by his appearance. Sahil Vachani packs quite a powerful punch in whatever business he puts his mind to. And I guess that is because Sahil has had his grounding in business since his childhood. People of a certain age, I mean, I mean my age, will remember the popular black and white Western televisions. It was Sahil's grandfather who had founded that business. After his studies overseas, Sahil worked at Citibank and then joined an arm of the family business, grew it and then sold his stake off. He joined the Max Group in 2016. In the short time that he has been here, he has already demonstrated his passion to grow businesses. Today, as the MD and CEO of Max Estates, he is spearheading the next level of growth across the Max Group. And he has taken a challenge to get Max Estates to be a powerful and trusted real estate brand. More power to you, Sahil, and welcome to Experiments in Leadership. Thank you for the kind words and delighted to be here. Thank you, Sono. Thank you. But you know, Sahil, this is one of the longest introductions that I have ever done on this platform. And to think that this is for my one of my youngest guests ever here. And, you know, I'm sure you get that a lot, a reference to your age. So as a leader, how do you handle that? Uh, actually, to be honest, it's getting lesser now. I'm getting older. I'm growing some white hair. So it's getting lesser now. Yeah. And there's many, many more young people doing a lot more exciting stuff. But I think, uh, especially in an industry uh, that I am in, which is real estate, it's been quite, um, quite unique and quite different. Uh, and I'm not traditionally from real estate, as you introduced, I come in from outside real estate. So uh, it's been it's been quite an amazing and interesting journey. Great. So, you know, you are talking about real estate. So, you know, you are leading an entire team, an entire company, which is in an area which is, to put it mildly, a difficult one. You know, the real estate market is, is quite opaque, totally unorganized. You as an organized and ethical company and you as a leader, how do you prepare your team to handle all the unsavory practices and still Emerge your winner. So, uh, to be honest uh, uh, and open about this, Onu, oh it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, in most organizations, uh, it does start from uh, the tone at the top. Uh, and uh, we are very, very clear that we are here for a certain purpose and mission. And that is truly to transform uh, the quality of life of, of a lot of people who will work and live at our developments. And once we are so, we are, our team is very deeply wedded to that purpose and having that as a North Star has uh, made it very easy actually to, mm -hmm. to decide what we are going to say yes to and what we are going to say no to. Yeah. Uh, and, and also if you look, look at it, uh, the markets today, whether it's the stock markets and we're a small listed company, but the stock markets today, uh, the the ecosystem today, the the governance ecosystem, the government ecosystem, is truly rewarding, um, uh, clean, well governed, institutionalized companies across industries. It could be across real estate is one such example, but we've seen that across all industries and real real estate more so. So. It's something that's very closely aligned to your purpose. And it's something that is being very uh, uh, handsomely rewarded by all stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, so it makes it much more easier to do. It does. And, you know, you were right that it flows from the top. But on the ground, the team still have to go and fight an unfair war in the market. Uh, so what are... And, you know, well, like you said, real estate is not the only industry you look around. There are many industries where uh, good leaders have to keep their teams motivated to continue to do the business the right way. So what are a couple of things that you do to keep your teams motivated and, you know, not even be tempted to do something that is unethical? 
besides firing them, of course. So, uh, you know, I think there's not, this is something that we cannot 100% control about how individuals, how they behave or act at the ground level. It's difficult and it gets more difficult as the company grows. But I think three or four things have really helped us. Hmm. Point number one is the tone at the top, as I said, you know, to be very clear, to be very articulate about what we are going to do and how we are not going to operate. A. B is is how we treat our people, you know, whether it is our, our, our team, our, our partners, our, our customers, our stakeholders, how we interact with them, how we interface with them, and what is our internal mindset about them. I think fundamentally, if we do have a respecting and a respectful orientation towards, um, towards each of them, I think that makes it easier. The third uh, is aligning the organization to a larger purpose rather than more than just creating profit, if I may say. I think profit is the oxygen that we all need. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. But the purpose for which we are here and what we intend to do, I think the more we're able to galvanize that, the more we're able to share that with the organization, with the folks and with the team uh, that works and does the real work on the ground, I think that's helpful. And finally, uh, one thing that's really helped us is creating a very uh, robust um, and, a, and, a, and a very generous uh, stock option package. And we are fortunate to have been listed at a very young stage in the mm -hmm. in the in our journey. And mm -hmm. so one of the ideas that, that, that we did very early in our journey is to give almost 40% of our entire team uh, very generous stock options. So they are, in fact, we, we don't just say you are like the owners of the company. They are actually the are owners. The owners. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, the, the idea is for them to genuinely create generational wealth if yeah. we go down for them because, you know, we all know that salary to a certain extent helps us meet our expenses. Yeah. Uh, real wealth creation happens through, uh, you know, options and measures like these. And if we are able to 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 have a purpose, align it with the the right incentives for the team, and be generous in those incentives for our team. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, have an orientation of just being respectful to our ecosystem. It doesn't matter if it's a vendor, and I always tell my team that you know even vendors we have to treat like customers in that sense. They are also a very very important stakeholder. So yeah. those are some of the things that we've tried to do. Yeah. Uh, I think early to say whether that's working or not, but it's. Yeah. It, it's it's just starting off. Yeah. So you know you are speaking uh, 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 from a position of somebody who's leading an entire organization and an entire uh, uh, group, so to say. Uh, but there are many people who are here who are leading small teams, who are business heads. So if I've understood you correctly, and if I can you know relate it to them, that a you have to first show your teams a purpose. I mean, money making or profit is then a byproduct if you have if you do your work purposefully if you are aligned to the purpose and you have to be respectful of each other which means colleagues vendors teams whoever uh, and be generous when it comes to rewarding your teams i mean don't be like a conjuice and say nay nay you know only for me and uh, not for anybody else because it is the entire team uh, that will contribute to the success. And I think a leader is as successful as the team wants him to be. I mean, uh, uh, you can be a good leader personally, but if your team makes it difficult for you, it is it is little difficult to get going. So yeah, good, good insights into that. But Sahil, you know that this is this podcast is really about two basic uh topics that we talk about one is a leadership experiment that did not work for you and the other is an leadership experiment that worked for you now since you do come from a family that is steeped in business you would have seen your grandfather your father uh you know make what you think were mistakes at that time or doing something that did not work did that impact you in any way before we come to your experiments uh, absolutely i think uh, uh, their successes uh, and setbacks uh, both had a very very deep impact on me and particularly as one was growing up and and young so there's a 
there's a lot I, I that one saw and imbibed. And I think many of the aspects about truly building one of the things that I think worked out both and was a common thread which enabled them both in their successes and also their setbacks was just the value they put on relationships. Yeah. Uh, Right. And I think the I've seen this with 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 my grandfather, with my father, with our group chairman, my father-in-law, Mr. Singh, you know, that the, everybody has I, I see a common thread, which is that they have been able to put a lot of value on 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 relationships, building partnerships, building relationships beyond just a transactional aspect. So I think that's been one. Uh, aspect that I think I've I've learned a lot from. You've learned, and so anything that you did unlearn from uh, them. I, I think uh, you know, uh, as entrepreneurs, we are always very optimistic. <laughs> we always think that you know, oh well, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. But I don't think because by nature or by design, we spend enough time thinking about what if two or three of these things don't happen, or what yeah. if. Uh, something doesn't go as per plan or goes delayed and a combination of some of those things do happen. So I think um, preparing uh, the company uh, from a balance sheet perspective and having spent and having the, having to spend the time thinking through some of these, hmm. what I think are, are, are key learnings that I've learned. That you've learned. Okay. So now uh, do you want to start with an experiment in leadership that worked for you or do you want to start with one that did not? So I can share, uh, uh, you know, a, a lesson that for me that didn't work first. Let's start with that. Uh, and and I think one of them, uh, one of the key things was as a, we can call it as a strategy or an experiment of leadership. I am using that a little fungibly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but wanting to do too much or wanting to to do many things or wanting to be too many things to too many different people. So you personally trying to do too many different things, you personally wearing too many hats. Too many hats. So I think when as a leader or as a business, we attempt to do uh, to do too many different things. And I think particularly in the world that we live in and, and you know, we've had the discussion about this, it is very volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex. And every industry that you can imagine is getting disrupted, whether it's through yeah. technology, with, with AI or, 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 and it's constantly evolving and changing. So in such an environment, uh, you know, where, where it is so dynamic, it is so uh, evolving, one has to stay on top of on top of the situation on and, and really be able to think through yeah. uh, depth and and I've just realized that as 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 a person for me I don't have the capability to do that for multiple things at at, mm. at the same time so I think the experiment that didn't work and I can be I can share with you when we started Max Ventures which was Max Ventures we had the mm. packaging business that you are aware of and mm. then um, we said you know we're going to do four businesses mm. we're going to do real estate we're going to be a VC, we're going to be doing investments, and we are going to be in the education space. Uh, and I realized in that limited time period that actually we got nothing done. Yeah. Uh, so so as a leader who I wanted to build separate teams uh, for each of these verticals, wanting to do those separate things, it, it just did not evolve because we realized that in each of those industries, there were there were players and there were people who were actually so focused and so deep in them mm -hmm. that actually uh, did a much better job. And mm -hmm. customers always have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, partners always have a choice. And that's kind of how we we I, I personally realized that as a leader, I was I was I was I was getting I was facing a setback. Mm -hmm. uh, in, leadership style which was translating into the strategy of the business which was translating into business outcomes yeah so if i uh hear you correctly what you're saying is that a leader needs to be totally focused and where uh where he or she feels that he lacks the focus either get out of that or delegate but don't try and do everything in the hope that you know people Absolutely. are going to say bhai Absolutely, and and I think you know just to just to pivot that or to turn that around, and we have seen uh, in the last six years. So since we, we as a personal, I was it's the same person. I was the same guy who was doing four things, did not find any joy. 
did not find any success either personally or as a leader or as an organization mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden we said you know what this is not working we just focus on one thing and we do that one thing really really try and do that one thing really 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 well mm-hmm. and while it's been a short span of four and a half five years we have seen a lot of initial success right. in 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 just changing the one aspect of a strategy or a or a or a leadership quality which is yeah. the ability to focus and i think the historical context is extremely important right because you mentioned uh, you know my grandfather in that yeah. generation yeah. Uh, there was a, the license raj that we lived mm-hmm. in so mm-hmm. there was a and barrier to entry with capital there was a barrier to entry through license yeah. so if you got through that barrier you it did not matter the the yeah. the yeah. Kind of you went into for lack of a better word because there was just the market was there and it was a supply driven constrained market yeah. but it has changed uh today indian consumers have accessibility to probably what the best consumers in the world have in in any other economy we are going to hopefully be the third largest economy at some point soon uh and uh you know uh, as we as we as the as the industry has changed as life has changed as the economy has changed as technology has come into play the playing field has changed and therefore it's important for leaders like myself to realize that the the what worked maybe 30 years ago is not what's going to work now and today what's going to work is a deep 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 focus get into the depth and truly uh, aspire to make a difference to the customer that we that we aspire for that will hopefully lead to business outcomes yeah focus and uh, so that is something that you learned through an experiment that you tried uh, now let's talk about an experiment that worked very well for you uh, so you know i i think the the just trusting people mhm having a very young team mm-hmm. not necessarily having veterans so to speak <laughs> and, and <laughs> no hope for people like me with <laughs> not so much hair <laughs> actually that's not true but I, what what i was saying is that that you know the when we were starting the real estate business everyone said oh you know you must hire only from the real estate industry and people who have 30 years of experience in the real estate industry and i think we chose not to do that mm-hmm. and we built a team which was a little bit a younger team and outside the from the real estate space so that experiment augured really well for us but i will caveat that to say that that experiment worked well uh, because of two or three reasons mm. one uh, we built a team that was very hungry and very humble mm. uh, and therefore were willing to learn mm. we supplemented that team with veterans mm. with people who we trusted who were from the industry mm. who gave us the right advice mm-hmm. and had the maturity and understanding to give us the advice enable us to make some of our mistakes right uh, guide us so i think without that we would have not been able to do this so it's right. not it is a you know there's there's no value for the, the no 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 i was i mean i was pulling your leg but yeah experience and enthusiasm if you have the right mix yes. uh, right. i think it's a deadly combination because it build that mix and you know one of the things that worked really well for us was to 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 say i don't know about it yeah and, and that for me personally i i don't feel shy about it i i'm i'm okay to have a conversation and say you know what's a leadership lesson that worked i can be in a room and say listen guys i don't know about this yeah i think to admit something that yeah. we don't know and and to seek help yeah i, I feel that as a leader uh, one expects you to be absolutely perfect on top of your game 24/7 be right and and be this leader that we have kind of positioned in our head but the reality is that is not life yeah. and we all have our own struggles we all have our own challenges and setbacks yeah. and 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 for all of us if at the right time we do seek help whether that is personal help professional help business help strategic help leadership help uh i think that has really helped me and i've i i, I and i am fortunate enough to 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 get that help mm. i you know from from my mentors uh yeah. from my group chairman i have i've 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 put together a a um um i wouldn't call it a, a board in that sense but just a few people who who mm. i can who 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 advise you who mentor you and who you can you know have a conversation with to say listen i don't know about this or i'm struggling with this and i think 
um, if we can continue doing that to to enable that sense of personal well-being, I think is first and foremost most important to be yeah. able to then become even a leader that is able to to yeah. to uh, to to try and aspire to build a company. Yeah. You know, it surprises me. Well, actually, it doesn't. But uh, I think almost everybody that I have spoken to on this platform, uh, they've all been leaders of repute. They've been hugely successful. And each one of them has said that if I don't know anything, I just tell the team, I tell the people that I don't know. Tell me more about it. And as young leaders, you know, people who are starting their careers or people who are middle management, sometimes, you know, we are very uh, embarrassed to say, I don't know, because we feel that the world will think less of us, our bosses will think le uh, less of us. But from all the leaders, what I have heard is that the only way you learn is to admit that you don't know. So you have just reiterated that. Uh, so the last question before I let you go is that, again, a common theme in all my conversations with the leaders has been this focus on humility and humbleness, right? Now, this is not something that can be acquired or can it? That's a question. And how do you know you're humble? Because the moment you say I'm humble, you are not. You're right. I, I think it's a, it's a everyday, uh, you know, there's a also a very fine line between confidence and humility. Uh, you know, where does, where do you not be confident and yet be humble? But I think going back to what you said, if, you know, there is something that we're willing to learn every day and, 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 you know, it's interesting. I learned this from my, from my, my daughters. And, and as, as I read to my daughter every night, she asked me a question, mm -hmm. uh, which she picked up and we've made the habit out of it. She said, what did you, what is a new thing that you learned today? Oh, I see. Hmm. She just asked me that question. And then obviously, you know, mm -hmm. she's, but it's, it's, it's a very interesting mm -hmm. uh, uh, perspective, right? I think that we, we must be confident in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know that is essential, but at the same time, there has to be a certain level of uh, willingness, ability to learn, ability to make mistakes, knowing that when we've made mistakes, knowing that we are not always right, yeah. knowing because I'm a leader or I'm a CEO and MD of Max Estates, I will I'm always right. I'm probably not, uh, and 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 I think finally one of the things that 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 I think has is is has helped a lot of people I've seen around me, is that they build around them an ecosystem of people who say it to them the way it is. Yeah. And I think if you can have people, friends, family, uh, spouse, kids, uh, wh whichever, friends, mentors, who who you have the courage to listen to them and they can say, you know, we, we think you're just going crazy. You know, I think that's extremely important. And I think building that ecosystem and having those that network is is extremely important. So my personal is advice. My personal viewpoint that I try to follow is that, you know, keep my keep your tribe small, but keep your tribe real. Yeah, yeah. No, so uh, you know, a good and actually in all the ecosystem that we build around ourselves, I think the spouses have to be taught how to actually say you are doing well because they are the worst critics. <laughs> so. <laughs> So everybody else will tell you how good you are. But uh, so I'm, I, you know, you are lucky to have a spouse that will tell you the way uh, it is and also the team. And like I said, more power to you because we need more people in the spaces that you are in to do the business the right way. Um, and so thank you for your time, Sahil. Enjoyed this conversation. And, yeah, viewers keep watching. We'll have many, many more conversations like this.